Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to use this short video to just introduce the different types of horizon that we have. Now, in a separate video I explained kind of what the zenith was and the deer, but these are basically the locations directly above us. So if we're standing on the surface of the Earth, directly above us at an altitude of 90 degrees is the zenith. Now directly below us would be the nadir, so that's kind of like a minus 90 degrees altitude, that would be the nadir. And then we also have some horizons as well. We have the astronomical horizon and we have the true horizon. We actually also have the visible horizon as well. And I'm going to explain what the differences are between all of those. Now first, it should be fairly obvious really that as the Earth rotates, we're standing stationary on the surface of the Earth. Then things like the zenith and our reference points are going to move as well. And it's useful to give ourselves some reference points because we are moving in space as well. Now the zenith is always going to be directly above us, so it moves with us. Same is true for the horizons really, they're relative to our position on the surface of the Earth. So, the true horizon then. This is basically where the Earth meets the sky. So if we look out into the distance, this would be where the Earth and the sky meet. That would be our true horizon. Now, it's really only kind of applicable to the, you know, if we look out at the ocean, if we go to, to the coast, basically, look out to the sea and the ocean, where the Earth meets the sky, that's pretty much going to be our true horizon. And this is the maximum, really, when you don't have any obstructions. So there's no mountains there, trees, buildings. This is then the true horizon. And how does it actually work? Well, if we're on the curved surface of the planet, if we then draw a circle around us, I don't know if that illustration works particularly well there, the true horizon is essentially a circle around the observer based on a spherical model of Earth. So it looks like that. So if we, as we rotate around, we're looking at a different part of that circle, which is the true horizon. Now, the visible horizon is essentially the limit when considering obstructions. So this time round, you know, if you're looking out to the horizon where the Earth meets the sky, but this time round, there's going to be an obstruction in the way. For example, it could be mountains, it could be trees, other things like that. So the visible horizon actually isn't going to be as low down as the true horizon. So here, if we're looking into the distance and you've got the mountain ranges there, then that is obviously going to obstruct the true horizon. So the true horizon is more like the, the theoretical limit, whereas the visible horizon is what we would actually observe with obstructions, like mountains. Now the astronomical horizon is, instead of drawing a circle on the spherical Earth, and then you're kind of moving around that, this time around it's a flat plane that touches the Earth's surface at the observer's location. So I've kind of drawn that coming out of the observer's eyes, but basically if we draw it from the surface of the Earth there, and it would be at a, a right angle to the zenith as well. So this time around, it's not a circle drawn on a sphere, it's a flat plane from where you are on the location of a sphere. So it's basically 90 degrees to the zenith like this here, which is different, which is why it looks slightly, slightly different angle to our true horizon. So like the true horizon, the astronomical horizon doesn't take into consideration any local obstruction. So for example, it's just like the theoretical horizon. It doesn't take into consideration any mountains like you might have there, any other obstructions. But the, diff the main difference between the two is one's on a plane and one's a circle on a sphere that you're kind of inside of basically. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy or find these videos particularly useful, then do consider becoming a member. Obviously it helps support the channel, but we also have extra videos in the members section as well. So thank you for watching.